you take care of your brother, you hear me? Uh, go now, go, why you go. Go. If you're seeing this broadcast, you are in a part of the country no longer controlled by the government of the United States. Boys, I love you both, but I want you to do what I would do. Kill this piece of... They messed with the wrong family. How did this happen? There's a new class of weapon. Everything went offline and never came back. They wipe us out, including U.S. Central Command. What am I supposed to do? I'm gonna fight. Anybody who wants to join is welcome to it. We'll hit them on our terms. We're the Wolverines, and we create chaos. We need to steal that weapon. It'd be the foothold we need and take our homes back. I can. Yes, you can. Relax. And squeeze. Mm, this is yes, yeah, this right. is the this is the remake of the eighties ter- the terrible eighties classic that is Red Dawn, which starred a host of people that I think were all in the outsiders except for Charlie Sheen, where they made a better movie in, 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 after Red Dawn. Or before Red Dawn. I don't care enough. Anyway, this is the remake of Red Dawn. Yeah. This time, instead of Russians, North Koreans invade America, as plausible as that may seem. And it's up to it's up to Thor and Josh Peck and Peter Malark from Hunger Games, amongst, an, among, amongst other pretty faces, to train themselves to become a guerrilla unit in order to take down the Koreans that have invaded their small, sleepy town of Spokane, Washington. So... As thrilling as that description may have sounded, oh. Jordan Grout, what did you think of Red Dawn? Jeez, it's the best action movie of the year. Skyfall, take a seat, because it's Red Dawn. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The movie sucks. Um, but, you know, I was never bored by it. <laughs> Even though, like, it's so just, like, generic and paint-by-numbers, and it's forgettable, because a lot of the scenes, I feel, are interchangeable. And because of that... I, I, it's it's kind of fuzzy looking back on the movie, and I just saw it 48 hours ago. I'm still, like, struggling to remember bits and pieces, and I feel it's because so many scenes are interchangeable, and it's just just kind of falls flat. It's better than Taken 2, I'll give you that. I disagree. Right? I don't think it's better than really? Taken 2. Oh. That, I, I don't know. I can't. Neeson's, a, Neeson's confident enough in that movie for me to enjoy <laughs> Taken 2 more than... Red Dawn. Red Dawn doesn't have a classic Liam Neeson telling his daughter to get out a grenade and take more with her and throw it into the crowd <laughs> scene. That, okay. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have any absurd scenes like that. I'll, say, but... I'll say this. It doesn't have absurdity to it to make it more entertaining. I wanted to see Red Dawn because, yes, I knew it would probably be terrible, but I thought it would be at least entertainingly terrible. And I didn't get that. I didn't have fun watching this movie. I have fun. I, I, I have fun in retrospect talking about how terrible it is, but while watching this movie, it was just making me angry. See, no, yeah, I, I never felt that way. But Taken 2, I was bored. Like, okay, there are scenes of, like, absurdity, like the grenades and, and the, the, the drive soundtrack. But, um, like, this movie, the, yeah, yeah, there's no absurdity, but I was never bored. I was, I was always giggling at something stupid or or some weird action sequence that was going on. The many Chris, Chris Hemsworth speeches that he gives – Okay, so uh, here's this. So what, amazing. If, what if this movie just like it just did like if it was like all out Team America, where it's just mocking the like the movie that it is because of how ridiculous it is. Like if because they have like that five minute montage sequence, and where which one? The they, yeah, I'm sorry, they have the first five minute montage sequence where Chris Hemsworth trains these very pretty young people that are all tiny and small <laughs> to be better and more capable in action than North Korean soldiers that have invaded America. <laughs> it has a it has a five minute montage dedicated to like Chris Hemsworth teaching somebody how to like trip you from behind and like <laughs> and if like it, if it was set to the team America music of we need a montage like maybe that would be amazing then i love this movie that'd be that'd be four stars right there like you, and you, like you tied strings to their arms so like little puppets walking around like you know like if, <laughs> if these things in it it could have made it better where if you know connor if, if you swap roles if you swap connor cruz and chris hemsworth a plus a plus for <laughs> <laughs> but but it didn't have that it took itself so seriously sorry yeah it took itself so seriously that it's just it wasn't fun for me it, it didn't get to that 
it didn't get to that juicy spot of me, like, enjoying how bad it was. Sure, I was, like, snickering to myself in certain aspects just because of how ludicrous things were. But it wasn't nearly as, like, bad, funny as it could have been, I guess. Compared to something like, I, it compared to, which we disagree on, compared to Taken 2, which I did think was, like, hilariously bad. But I, I enjoyed, I actually, you know, I enjoyed the action in this movie. Like, it's, it's stupid, but... Did you? Did you? I, I, I thought it was, okay, it was better than I thought. It wasn't great, but it was better than I expected. And because of that, yeah, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. Like, the scene when, um... When, when they have to go into the building to to retrieve um... oh, the video game scene where they had to <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the third yeah, person yeah. shooter scene where they had to they had a clear <laughs> objective and there were several levels and they had to proceed up them and fight the boss yeah yeah exactly it's it's so stupid but it's better than what what I was expecting I'll say that scene, so that scene starts out back. that scene starts out well. Right, I think because like you have like Chris Hemsworth, like you gotta jump, so they jump across the gap, and it's like it's kind of fun and stuff. But then you get to like you get to what mostly happens in this movie, where you have these tightly edited action sequences. It really follows the Bourne logic, and which is fitting because Dan Bradley, the director, has he's been like a, a stunt stun coordinator, stun coordinator right? and director on yeah. like like over a hundred movies, including the Bourne, some of the Bourne films, I believe, and mm-hmm. like so. At the same time, he doesn't seem to handle that touch. Pro- like, there's a, there's a, there's like a fight between Chris Hemsworth and another character, which is shot so close. It's so tightly shot. It's just it, it's the kind of thing that bothers me. It doesn't. It didn't yeah. Handle. But okay, this film it was supposed to come out in like 1999, right? <laughs> it was supposed to come. It was it was filmed three years ago. Okay. It was made before the, the same with Cabin of the Woods. It was made before it was made before the MGM bankruptcy, and then it got put on the shelf. And then obviously, yeah, and uh, um, because you know you have a film like Bond, it's not like this movie's going to get as much attention. So like Bond comes out, then Cabin or Cabin of the Woods comes out. That was obviously a success, and then Cabin of the Woods comes out. I think I've explained this in one of the other recordings that we've yeah. done. Okay, <laughs> I, I I know I said 1999, um, but I meant 2009. Obviously. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, are you, I thought you're just being you're just being hilariously over dramatizing something, but okay. That year would have been like Chris Hemsworth overload with like Cabin in the Woods, Red Dawn, Star Trek, and um, <laughs> people recognize him from Star Trek so easily they'd be like, oh, it's, Kat, it's, 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 it's Kirk's father. <laughs> that that the, the one movie he was in, uh, the the Perfect Getaway, right? Yeah, he's in that. Yeah, I, I realized that watching the movie, I was like, holy crap, he would have been like the Jude Law of two thousand nine. <laughs> I feel like he. I mean, I'm happier now that he's come. He he did this. This movie comes out after he's Thor. After he's proven himself in other because I feel like he just would have went nowhere if they. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, he probably would have gone nowhere. <laughs> but he he's good in the role, like handling all like the horrible, horrible dialogue. He he delivers delivers it better than I feel most actors of, of his age would be able to do. Yeah, I mean, he he does, and like I think I again I've explained this on one of the other recordings, but Hemsworth, yeah, he does have a he got this role based on his dailies in Cabin in the Woods, and you have that one scene in Cabin in the Woods where he's given that big macho speech about he's going to come back here with guns and helicopters and tanks, <laughs> which is which is basically like the funniest scene in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> and so like he got and that and like it's almost like he's channeling that same character, except he's still playing up the irony of his statements while the movie is taking them deadly serious. And mm-hmm. like so, I would say that Chris Hemsworth walks away with dignity in this movie. Like, no, not, oh, definitely not. But no, I'm saying, I'm saying he. I think he he comes across better than everyone else in the film, with the exception of maybe Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who shows up for like five minutes. It's like, hey guys, I'm the pro here. I, here's where's yeah, the pain. The very end of the movie. Yeah, the very end of the movie. And then, and but so yeah, I think Hemsworth as the lead. He does a decent job with what he's given, even though things that he's given to do are ludicrous in many cases. Certainly better than Josh Peck, whose role is the little brother, who who I assume was adopted, because there's no way that he and Chris Hemsworth are <laughs> brothers. And every scene he walks in, he has his hoodie on. It looks like he's about to freestyle rap with somebody. <laughs> like, yeah, who 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 ends the movie with this hor- <laughs> this horrific speech where like I don't even I don't know who thought he had charisma enough to be like the character <laughs> he's supposed to be in this movie, but it's it's yeah it's this movie. And then the um. Who, the the Hunger Games guy. Uh, yeah, jo- uh, Josh, Hutcherson. Josh Hutcherson. Yeah, he he was you know okay. Uh, it's good. It's a good thing that he's attached himself to several other franchises since that movie came out. Yeah, 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 and, and it's a good thing uh, Adrian Palicki has that Wonder Woman show under her belt, right? <laughs> 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 
because she was terrible in this movie. Yeah, the women in this movie all no, running around with, with their hair not even tied back. They're just running around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, Dean Morgan shows up, and that is like a breath of fresh air in this movie when he finally shows up. Wait, hold on, because we, we skipped over Hutcherson's amazing scene where he – well, he has two amazing scenes, one of which will lead to my discussion of Connor Cruz. But the first one is when he raises his gun up in the air, and he's like, Wolverine! <laughs> <laughs> who, who did that in the first movie? Was that C. Thomas I think Howell? It was either C. Thomas. I think it was C. Yeah, it must have been C. Thomas. Yeah. It, or it, maybe it was Charlie Sheen. I, I think it was C. Thomas Howell. I think, I'm pretty sure it was C. Thomas Howell, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, C. Thomas Howell. But, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, imagine if Hutcherson would have been Spider-Man. That would have been amazing. Because he auditioned I think he auditioned for Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah, that would have been great if he would have been Spider-Man. If it was, oh. he'd really, it'd be a PG Spider-Man or something. <laughs> Whew. Imagine that. No, I'm, he, not, I'm gonna stop doing that. But, uh, getting back to, okay, his other scene. So Connor Cruz in this movie, or as I like to say, Tom Cruise is adopted black son. Which a, fr- a phrase that I don't get to say enough in the world, really. Uh, Tom Cruise is adopted by and Connor Cruise in this movie. Now, I don't think I can act at all, but I feel like I probably could have stepped in and did a better job than Connor Cruise in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, there was one thing he said, like one line delivery. I forgot what it was, and I wish I would have written it down. And it, I, I'm no one stepped in and was like, can you tell him what this line means? Because he obviously has no idea what he just said. Um, and I forgot. Uh, I'm, I'm going to remember it in like an hour. All right. Well, he has, he has a scene with Josh Hutcherson where the, where the product placement comes heavily in hand, here, where, <laughs> where they, they, they hide out in the subway, and then everybody's in the subway. They're like, oh, oh, oh. And so then they, like, jump on the counter. They're like, fill this bag with bread. And they get all this subway food, and they fill up, like, a bucket of soda. And then you cut to the next scene, and it's like all of them, they've all devoured the subway food. It's like, wow, that was a great <laughs> meal we had, guys. <laughs> it's like, what, what movie am I watching right now? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I mean, they, they couldn't cut anything out because it was short already. That's the best thing about the movie. It's like. Only an hour and 30 minutes. Because they had to set up Red Dot 2. That's what it seemed like at the end. <laughs> Red Dot 2 is still dawning. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so okay. So this movie also, among the things that happened during the course of its production, it had to change the Chinese to North Koreans. And it's very noticeable with this film. You get, Love it. You know, like, you wouldn't think you'd be able to notice, like, redubbing of a foreign language so easily, but this movie makes it very apparent that the Koreans, quotation fingers, are probably speaking Chinese. <laughs> or Mandarin, I'm sorry, Cantonese, whichever. Like, it, it's... It, yeah. It, oh, God. The, which, it's, and I, uh, I'm willing to, like, put my... I'm willing to, like, put my guard down. I'm willing to, like, take... A, like, step in and put, put away my, you know... Hold my suspension of disbelief here, but there's no plausible way that... North Koreans, with the help of Russians, we were informed late, very later in the film, are able to take over America, right? This doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's not even said, like, it kind of gives an opening sequence where you're, like, supposed to believe that, oh, man, things aren't good. But, like, there's no way in whatever universe this movie's presenting that the North Koreans were able to take over. And let it on, we don't get to see anything in this movie. All we know is that Washington's taken over. We get a few lines of dialogue about other things that are going on. But there's, right. like, there's, there's oh, nothing. Exactly. Nothing's nothing yeah. told to us about what's going on in the, in the movie. There's no frame of reference here. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Yeah, you you're right about the dubbing. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 threw me off all the time. Like every scene. But the villain was decent. You know, the the, the main bad guy. I, I thought it was entertaining. Yeah, the, I, the, the the main bad guy from Die Another Day in the first <laughs> 10 minutes of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, well, yeah, yeah. In terms of, he needs to be one-dimensionally evil. Like, yeah, sure, he's, he was amazing at that role. I'm just trying to pull out good things about the movie. I, there's uh, not many. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, there, there aren't. There aren't. Um, and, oh, who, it's, who is um, you know, I hate that actor that um, uh, plays a dad who's killed at the beginning. He was in Dark Knight Rises. He's, he's like poor man's uh, Chris Cooper. Yeah, Rick Cullen. He's the father in uh, our favorite movie, Ghost Rider. Yeah, ugh, I can't stand him. He does like, come off as, like, when you can't get Chris Cooper, you get Brett Cullen. Yeah, yeah. He's, like, and Chris Cooper's stunt double. <laughs> I, I hated him in Ghost Rider, I hated him in Dark Knight, hate him in this. Everything I see him in. 
He, he just irritates me. I hate his acting. Well, get to the cabin. <laughs> hate him in this. Um, but, okay. Something good about the movie. Uh, here it comes. Jeffrey D. Morgan. Well, you're going back to Jeffrey D. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no. Is, is there something else that you... I mean, no, I mean, we just talked about it already, and I think the, what's the extent of his role that's good? He shows up and has authority in his voice. Like, what did he do that was so good in this movie? But let's talk about the scene in the woods when they meet each other. That is so ridiculous. Like, what's, he says something like, um, like, oh, we're, we're trying to find, like, all, 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 all the kids and whatnot. And then they all just say, for no reason, they all lower their guns. <laughs> and it's like, would you really lower your guns in, like, a, a, an occupied area at that moment? Well, they're not dressed like Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, North Korea in their in their bland uniform. So, obviously, they're those kids you can trust and those random Marines that show up looking for the Wolverines you can trust as well. <laughs> How did the how did the Wolverines how did the word get out that the Wolverines were were like hitting it hard in Spokane that like they're coming from Camp Pendleton we're like who would they hear this from like who told who sent the who sent the message across the down the coast that was like guess what guys Spokane Washington's doing a pretty good job here you better go seek out the Wolverines it's just like in Return of the King when they're lighting the yeah I, yeah I didn't see the torch <laughs> the torches of God nor seen didn't have it yeah, dawn for me so no. you just didn't see it <laughs> apparently. Or they did like the tin can with the string. Like, oh, that must have been it. Never mind. You got me. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. They must. They must have pulled out the. They pulled. They pulled out the uh, the Morse code machines. The yeah. last scene in Independence Day. They pulled those out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, at least this movie wasn't in 3D. I think that's that's the moral we got from this. Was it in D box? Would you watch this in D box? I no. <laughs> I'd watch this in no box. <laughs> Oh, what if there's a Best Buy steel bookcase for it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I know if it, even if it was sold with copies of uh, Drake, <laughs> the Drake and Josh seasons on Nick from Nickelodeon, I would not buy the uh, the blue on this one. Let's get. I'm gonna say forget about this film. That's my rating on this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a horrible thing. And, okay, I didn't mention the one thing that really kind of angered me actually because the movies. In the year that we've had Red Tails and Act of Valor, let alone also Total Recall, which I used to think was the most unnecessary movie of the year, Red Dawn's taken over as the most unnecessary <laughs> movie of the year. But um, where we had like, these other movies, you know, that they don't necessarily, well, Act of Valor more, but there's that jingu- jingoistic notion of, like, America, yeah, this movie, mm-hmm. it comes out in Thanksgiving weekend, and... It's bloodless, so it's rated PG-13. And like, why are we supposed to see this? Like, what are we getting out of this movie? Where is the message to take? What is? What are we taking away besides? Hey, it's cool to like train yourself at a young age and kill people because there's no blood that comes from that. So take your family and go see Red Dog. It's rated PG-13. Like, I don't. I I hate that. I hate that about this movie. Yeah, I I I'm I'm there with you. Yeah. It just make, it makes me it makes me it, that's what made me angry about this movie. Like I was fine with just not liking it, but that made me angry when I started thinking about why does this movie exist? Like it has no relevance at all in culture. Like at least the original Red Dawn comes out like during the late Cold War. There's like it's not necessarily plausible, but there's a fear there involving Russians invading America. No one's worried about North Korea coming in and invading America. <laughs> <laughs> that's not something that's going to happen. That there's no cultural revel- relevance about that, aside from them being the bad guys of the world at this moment. Like, at least if they if they even if they had the guts to stick with their China guns, like that would have meant something, maybe. But no, that means nothing to be having North Korea in here, and it just feels kind of just 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 makes me hate the movie as opposed to just recognizing it as bad. Well, the best thing about the movie is that, like, in a month, no one's going to even remember there it. There you go. Thank you. Well, it'll be a Blu-ray in a month. So. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody will buy it. Yeah, so, 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 like, a month and a half from now, then nobody will remember this movie. And come January, you'll find it in the bargain bin at Kmart. And then you can get it for 99 cents on Black Friday next year on Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Preparation for the direct dvd sequel. Still starring Drake Josh, Jake, Josh Drake, Josh Peck, whatever. <laughs> now, whatever that asshole's name is. <laughs> the lack the whackness. <laughs> The <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, I, you know, I uh, yeah, as okay, I said that I never found it boring, but I would never recommend it to someone. Thank if you. someone's like, "Hey, give me a cheesy action film," no, 
I remember saying, yeah, Red Dawn. Watch the lockout. Lockout's an amazing cheesy action film. Space Shield, yeah. I'd, put, I'd watch that in a second yeah. if I was given the opportunity. If I was given the opportunity between that and Red Dawn, Lockout would win hands down. Space Jam? Oh, Lockout would win over a whole bunch oh, of things. It would win over a lot of things. It would overtake it, too. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe that Lockout wasn't on sale during Black Friday. I was really upset about that. I couldn't get Space Jam for, like, $5. I would have snapped that up in an instant, but no. It was, uh, it was at Best Buy. It wasn't, it wasn't for cheap. It was like twelve ninety nine. But still, I mean, come on. This would be there for like three dollars. Why, why am I gonna pay? <laughs> I could have got like Lord of the Rings for three dollars. Like, like <laughs> I already have Lord of the Rings. I want to get Space Shield. Why can't I just do that? Like, but it's on. It's on Netflix. Watch instant. So. Oh, that's right. For the time being, I don't need to own it. But I, well, I don't know if it's the unrated version on Netflix. Watching instant, though, that's the key. Uh, that's the, yeah, that's, the my, that's my one main issue with Red, with uh, with uh, with Space Jail, that it felt like it's easily going to be a film more enjoyable in its R-rated cut, opposed to the PG-13 version. Yeah. Although the, I, I hope the motorcycle scene is always the same, though. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that scene needs to win an Oscar. Like just that scene. I don't know for what category. That that film needs an Oscar for that scene. It needs yeah. several. Um, but would you watch the motorcycle scene for an hour and a half as opposed to watching Red Dawn? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so would I. I, I yeah. would. I, I, yeah. well, I, it'd be like an interesting pre experiment. <laughs> it's like watching the uh, working print of uh, Blade Runner. Exactly, or Wolverine. Which I think was the theatrical one. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, the work print, theatrical cut. Yeah. You can't tell the difference. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Red Dawn, obviously, I think the message to take away is here is always wash your hands after going to the bathroom. <laughs> so, thank you, Jordan. Well, where can people find more? Thank you. Where can, where can people find more of your work? Oh, you can go to at uh, Amsterdam Chap on Twitter. You can go to Jordan Grout on Facebook. You can go to Damn Dirty Blog at blogspot.com, which has not been updated for months. Well, you should really lay down the law and update your update that blog. I know. It's been a busy few months. Come January, I'm going to get get on it. So I, so I apologize if you go to it and you're like, what the hell is this crap? Yeah. First, first I get nothing from the VHS Diaries of Alan Aguilera, and now I got nothing from Damn Dirty Blog. What's going on? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you, Jordan. Oh, thank you, Jordan, for talking Red Dawn with me. I'm glad I was able to vent some frustrations about the movie. It's, it's been a pleasure. It, it's always a pleasure to hear you vent about Red Dawn. Great. Thank you. And now back to myself and Abe. <laughs>